Welcome to part two of Resident Evil Remake, Secrets from the Guidebook, where we'll be taking a look at the surprisingly deep character profiles in the Biohazard Kaitai Shinsho. Not only do we get character bios, but we also get a breakdown of their equipment, which I never expected them to go that deep. And there's a few gems in here that really made me laugh. <laughs> this book is packed with information, so I'll be focusing on its contents alone. Now, which one of these beloved characters shall we start with? Jill. Ladies first. You got it. Jill Valentine. The only female member of STARS Alpha Team, Jill has experienced the training course of the US Army Delta Force in the Counterterrorism Unit. She's an explosives disposal expert and has a general knowledge of chemicals. You can see her reasons for enlisting from her words, I can't forgive the evil that threatens the citizens. She has a very strong sense of justice and responsibility and doesn't hesitate to question what she feels is absurd. Even if rejected, she will persistently dig to find the truth. Although she has a rather impulsive temperament, she's calm during missions and has saved her teammates countless times with her precise judgments. She doesn't complain in emergencies, so she's often regarded as strong, but a small part of her seems to be pretending. In a strange enclosed space, Jill faces a series of tragedies and skillfully uses even heavy weapons to overcome difficulties one after another. When you see her vivid way of fighting, you won't feel she's weak. You may want to describe her as a woman who is stronger than a man, but that perception doesn't really capture her essence. Witnessing the horrific death of her companion, showing fear when a zombie suddenly attacks, and the anxiety that arises from the mysterious acts of her allies, in these moments of weakness, she shows her true self. That is an integral part of Jill Valentine's appeal. Her hands are dexterous, and she can quickly open simple locks with a lockpick. Her hobby is playing the piano, and she can play Moonlight Sonata at a glance with the musical score. She has pads on both shoulders that are a little too heavy for a delicate body. The suspenders support Jill just below the chest, which in turn highlights Jill's style. But really, I read some comments from the designer who said he wanted to secretly emphasize her breasts. Jill is more likely to be in a logistical role rather than on the front lines, but she has no shortage of shooting skills. Her gun of choice is a customized Samurai Edge that features a smaller slide stop than the standard model. Jill's survival knife is smaller and slightly less deadly than Chris's. The grenade launcher is a powerful weapon that more than compensates for Jill's defensive weakness. One of her alternate costumes gets a breakdown too. The normal costume from Resident Evil 3, it's colorful and revealing. Jill has a fresh hairstyle with the beret off. A bright sky blue top fits her body and doesn't interfere with her movements. The off-white cardigan wrapped around the waist heightens the overall impression. A tight skirt accented with piping. It's a chic color, but it's exciting that it's 20 centimeters or more above the knee. And just in case anyone was unsure of how excited they should be, 20 centimeters is about 8 inches. The side pack obtained in the middle of Resident Evil 3 is equipped from the beginning and comes with a storage hook for defensive items. I saved it for last because with something as iconic as Jill's beret, surely we'll learn its backstory. It says, a beret with the star's medallion is Jill's trademark. I didn't mean to get you that excited. Chris Redfield, the one who should be called so the ace come. of star's alpha team. Chris, you make me proud. He's unbending and willing to disobey orders for his beliefs. Once a member of the US Air Force, he was discharged due to conflict of opinion with his superiors. He has been close with his teammate Barry since his Air Force days, and the two have worked together on a number of missions with great success. Barry. Where's Barry? He boasts a tough body and is unmatched at handling a firearm within stars. Chris, take a piece of the action. He's mentally tough and always gets the job done. I knew you'd come. Let's get out of here. He's a little rough around the edges and doesn't notice the details. He seems to always care about his younger sister, Claire. A strong man who has escaped death on multiple occasions. The battlefield this time is a hall of terrors where devilish acts were carried out without hesitation. Any ordinary person couldn't endure being attacked by creatures one after another. Even if they overcame them, their mind would be gradually seized with fear as they grasp the seriousness of what happened, and their life will be over. However, 
Chris, who has a fierce flame of justice burning within, never stops. The shreds of truth don't fight in Chris. Instead, it inspires his anger towards evil. This anger to defeat evil fuels his body and drives him to find out the truth. His shooting arm is precision itself. He's got experience winning numerous marksmanship titles. Chris's weapon is a Samurai Edge custom made for stars. He requested additional modifications to his, but in the game he's forced to use the one left by Jill. He's got an old-fashioned military style haircut that is far from fashionable. It doesn't seem like a popular style with women. But he appears rugged and honest. Where did they go? The large survival knife is a favorite from his time in the Air Force. Along with the large case, it is one of Chris's characteristic items. He's got muscular arms that tell us he's passed through many places of death. An armored vest with the star's logo, it's fitted at the side by string. The color varies depending on the wearer. Thick cotton pants are stars issued, but only Chris wears knee pads. A new model of Star's uniform, the same one in Code Veronica, but the coloring and vest details are slightly different. The glimpse of the collarbone is fan service to female players. And if that's fan service, what's this? Tell me in the comments. Rebecca Chambers, a new recruit who has just joined Star's that same year and is dispatched on her first mission. She's in charge of Bravo Team's health. It's hard to imagine the youngest member in a military unit being 18 years old and still retaining some childishness. But she's a prodigy who's already completed her bachelor's degree and was selected for STARS due to her outstanding knowledge of chemistry. There are times when it's easy to get swept away by the emotions of a situation and she still has some anxiety about how to deal with emergencies. The success in her field of specialty is remarkable and no one in STARS can rival her chemical formulations. Whether or not she can demonstrate her exceptional abilities hidden inside is said to depend upon the support of the veteran team members. Rebecca was suddenly thrown into a harsh survival situation right from her first mission. Given her overwhelming lack of experience, it wouldn't have been strange if she were the first to die, but she wasn't. The first reason for this is that her specialized knowledge of chemistry fits perfectly in this scenario. The mansion was full of medical supplies for pharmaceutical companies, and Rebecca was able to demonstrate her special abilities and immediately mix drugs according to the situation. Meeting up with the reliable Chris so early on is also another big reason. And for the sake of Chris and the others, ignoring the danger to herself, with innocence and hard work, she puts forth her full effort. And as a result, paved the way for her personal growth. Ultimately, many of these factors make the newcomer Rebecca the only survivor of Bravo Team. That's my plan, sir. Utilizing her knowledge of chemicals, she can instantly formulate medicines found locally and use them for treatment and attacks. Whoa! What is it? What? Oh! Oh no! For Chris, who has little knowledge of pharmaceuticals, her talent is a lifesaver. I'm counting on you. No problem. She is familiar with the piano, but her skill oh, is... What was that? She has a lovely and innocent face. A clean, boyish haircut suits her well. Rebecca is the only one in stars to use the Samurai Edge without further modifications. Her choker is the same color as the first aid mark and gives the overall look harmony. The author wonders, is it fashionable in an emergency? She has a habit of holding her head when she is bored, which is weird because like I said, she doesn't get bored when you're playing as her. Guess it's just when Chris is around. Must be the haircut. A bullet and blade proof vest with an emergency mark on the back that matches her pack. At first glance, it's a casual piece of equipment, but it saves her life in some situations in this incident. A sub pack with an emergency mark worn on the back of her waist. It seems to be her favorite item. Her pants are the same shape as the other members, but they have a lighter atmosphere because they're rolled up. The concept of her special costume is belly button out western, or western with navel. The amount of exposed skin enhances the lively atmosphere of Rebecca rather than sex appeal. The rose pink mini scarf has a cowboy knot to match the concept. The abundantly used fringe on the chest is typical western style. The visible belly button tied from the hem is cute. All right. I'm gonna continue my investigation. 
Silver and turquoise, which is the basis of Western fashion, is used at key points. The boots are semi-long with an embossed pattern. The youthful design gives plenty of space for her legs, which is perfect for Rebecca. Bold micro mini denim pants with the hem cut off. The key point is that the holster is attached to the bare parts of her legs. The finishing touch is the cowgirl hat, which isn't even in the game. Barry Burton, a veteran of Alpha Team with a wealth of firearms knowledge. He comes from SWAT and has been a good buddy to Chris since the old days. He's in charge of maintaining and replenishing the firearms for the team, and in private, he is known as a gun nut. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. He's a good husband and a good father at home, and he loves his two daughters, Moira and Polly. Just as his solid as a rock appearance, he's a dependable man. He has been trusted among team members because he is compassionate, always thinks about his teammates, and has a strong sense of responsibility. He is a hot-blooded man who loves justice, hates evil, and is the perfect person for stars who protect the safety of the citizens. On this mission to investigate the truth behind the bizarre incident, Barry should have shown more fighting spirit than anyone else, but this time... Shortly before his mission, Barry was worried about a problem. That problem makes Barry, a person who should be more reliable than anyone else, act in suspicious ways, and whose words don't match his actions. A deep love for his family, feelings for his team, and a strong sense of justice. Because he holds these, Barry suffers an emotional dilemma. What on earth could make him act this way? And what path will he finally choose? There's only one way to find out. Barry has deeply carved facial features. He often wears a sorrowful look in this game. His buddy is a 44 Magnum, which is recognized by gun nuts like himself. He usually keeps it in a leather holster hanging on his chest. His red vest is his trademark. Barry also has a samurai edge customized to his liking, large caliber and high power. The deep affection he has for his wife can be seen in the fact that he always carries pictures of his family. Barry's face when bragging about his daughters is one of concerned fathers everywhere. So, the time has come at last. Albert Wesker, the quiet, calm and collected captain of STARS. He's also the leader of Alpha Team. He was appointed captain at the recommendation of Umbrella, the largest private sector sponsor when the unit was created. Can't be serious. He wasn't originally a police officer, and there is no clue to explore his past, other than his profound knowledge of biotechnology. He's a perfectionist who doesn't make mistakes in any situation, has keen insight and good judgments, and is respected by those around him. He has the dignity and personality suitable for someone at the top. But since he doesn't show any emotion, he leaves a cold and inorganic impression. He's a mysterious man both in his career and his personal life, and always has an inaccessible atmosphere about him. Wesker has a lot of mysteries since being appointed as captain, but his guarded way of thinking didn't leave room for his unit members to make guesses. The disappearance of Bravo Team's helicopter, the brutal death of his subordinate Joseph on this mission, in the face of rapidly increasing despair, he doesn't change his expression and guides his troops to a nearby mansion that seems safe. It seems, as usual, the perfectionist made the most appropriate judgment. No, it was in fact a good decision. In his own words, according to plan. What? Premature. No one knows what kind of thoughts are reflected in the glowing eyes behind the sunglasses. His expression is unbreaking in any situation. It's extremely difficult to read his feelings, partly because his eyes are hidden by sunglasses. My words exactly. Only Wesker wears an open collared shirt, so more fan service, I guess? Even in military styled attire, what Wesker wears is based in black. As the captain of Alpha Team, compared to the others, his equipment is a little luxurious. He seems to be using the radio to contact others than Chris and Jill. My little piggies. Like Barry, he uses a samurai edge with his own improvements. Although he usually specializes in using his head, his shooting skills are considerable. Okay, Wesker's sunglasses. It's gotta be good. Sunglasses worn day and night are Wesker's trademark. 
Okay, so you've stuck with me through all that gear talk. Let's see what the book has to say about the kindly named The Others. On Alpha Team, we have Joseph Frost, in charge of maintenance. The bandana on his head is his trademark. He's a cheerful mood maker, but also hot-blooded, combative, and tends to be impulsive. On this mission, while taking the lead searching for Bravo Team, he was ambushed by a group of Cerberus to become the first victim of Alpha Team. Brad Vickers, Chemical Protections Officer. In spite of his position to fight crime, he is cowardly and lacks a sense of mission. He was piloting the helicopter this time, but was afraid when the situation got out of hand and fled alone. No! Oh, creating the situation where Chris and the others had to flee to the mansion. Perhaps because of his conscience, he tries to contact his friends by radio many times afterwards. Poor Brad doesn't even get a face. He has one in RE3. I mean, had one. On Bravo Team, Enrico Marini, a man who also serves as the Deputy Chief of Stars and the Captain of Bravo Team. Since he has a lot of experience and is warm, his subordinates have a strong desire for him to serve as Captain. However, with the intentions of the sponsor corporation, Wesker was given the position. That's unfortunate. Enrico quickly realized the truth behind the incident and tried to tell someone, but... Kenneth J. Sullivan, the oldest member of STARS. He's a man of few words who appears stern but has a gentle personality. He's performed dangerous missions like reconnaissance and securing positions, so his abilities are undisputed. However, he couldn't cope with this abnormal situation and immediately after Chris and the others arrived at the mansion, was attacked by a zombie and died. Richard Aiken, a bright and cheerful young man who always smiles. He is highly regarded, not only for his combat skills, but also for communication skills. Known for taking care of those around him, and partly due to being close in age, he was left to support the rookie, Rebecca. In the mansion, he reunites with Chris and the others in a dying state after being bitten by the large snake, Yawn. Richard is voiced by Joe White, who was also the voice of Chris. And this. Resident Evil. Forrest Speyer, in charge of maintenance. He has been friends with Chris and Jill since before he joined the unit. He takes great pride in his mission and has earned a great deal of trust from his peers for his perfect work. Along with Chris, he is a master marksman. Although he is unrivaled in dealing with heavy weapons, he was discovered as a horrible corpse on the terrace of the mansion. Edward Dewey, the giant of stars with a helicopter license. His specialty is rifles. He was confirmed to have been dispatched to the forest as a member of Bravo Team, but his whereabouts are unknown. He is probably the prey of monsters, like Joseph and the others. There was a lot of text in here to translate, and it's great to finally fin it. Oh, monsters. Well, I guess there'll be a part 3 sometime in the near future. In the meantime, don't forget to check out part 1.